What the lesson for today comes down to is basically this. If you're not turning away some of your customers, then you're doing it wrong. When you think about your customers, you should be thinking about them as a set of relationships rather than, say, a set of transactions. If you view your customers as a set of transactions, then you'll probably adopt the mindset that you want to have as many of these transactions as possible. Rather, if you view your customers as relationships, as a set of relationships, then you're going to take a more qualitative approach and seek only good customers. And when I say good customers, for long-term success, what I'm really talking about is not just customers that are good for you, but customers that where you're a good fit for their needs as well. That way, it is a mutually beneficial relationship. So what you're really after are just these win-win relationships where both sides are getting something uh, more than what they lose out of the transaction. So obviously you don't want bad customers. You don't want rude or cheap or uh, the type of customer who is going to not be happy with your work no matter what you do. And if you've done any repairs before, you know what I'm talking about. Um, repairs in any field, I would imagine. Uh, the type of customer who is just going to complain no matter what. Um, you kind of know these customers as they're walking into your, your shop because they're probably already complaining about past experiences they had with literally everybody else. So you can only imagine what they're going to be saying about you a week down the road. So not wanting bad customers is pretty obvious. But not wanting customers that you're bad for is not so obvious. So I alluded to this a little bit in the first rule where I mentioned that you don't actually want naive customers with really deep pockets. And you might think, well, why not? It's a free market. Why not let them spend their money if they choose to spend their money on frivolous or uh, completely unnecessary things or things um, under a misguided idea. So they're, they're trying to get a certain outcome, but you know that it, it just doesn't work that way. You, you get that a lot um, in the world of guitars, of course. There's a lot of, uh, let's just say, tone-related voodoo. But what I would rather do, rather than take that person's money in basically a one-time transaction, and then you'll probably never deal with them again, is I would rather educate them, even if that means driving them away from my business, either to somebody else's business because maybe they do better work in that area of, of work. Like if it's finishing, for example, I don't do any uh, finish touch up or anything like that because I'm just not that good at it. And I know there's some people who specialize in just that very thing. So I'd rather send them that way than do sort of a okay, mediocre job myself. And that customer remembers that. So then you're, even though you didn't make a transaction with them, you're already developing a better relationship than if you had made that transaction. And so they might come to you later for other things, if not just to figure out where to get these other things because they start to see you as basically an unbiased problem solver. When I say unbiased, I mean you're not biased towards yourself. You're not saying that you have the solution for every one of their woes, you're looking at the bigger picture of um, what are all the, the services and, and shops available in the area, and you're really just trying to point them in the right direction. So don't be biased towards yourself necessarily. Just try and be of benefit to the customer, even if that means turning them away to someone else, or perhaps what they're asking for um, isn't really going to get them the response that they're looking for with their guitar. It's not going to uh, give it more bass response or more sustain is, is a common one, of course. And a lot of things do give more sustain, but also there's a lot of things that don't really affect the instrument in the way that the person is expecting. So anyway, turn away bad customers in whatever the politest way you can do that possible. And for the good customers who don't necessarily need your services, maybe they'd be better off somewhere else or not getting that work done at all, be completely upfront and honest with them and they will stay in your network for 
another repair later on because they'll see you as an unbiased problem solver for them. And as I've already mentioned before, you really only need a small number of these mutually beneficial relationships to have a good business that works for you. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.